SoundCloud used to be a safe haven for indie artists, but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. What's up everyone, V back again, this time talking about SoundCloud's muggy ass copyright policies. If you follow me on Instagram, you know this all started when my Beyonce remix parody song was removed from SoundCloud for copyright violation. It led me on a deeper investigation to figure out if SoundCloud was correct in calling my upload a copyright infringement. Now, in this episode, we are going to talk about some laws and policies and just boring shit. So, maybe go smoke something and come back. I'll be waiting. A few moments later. Okay, now that we're ready, let's get into it. Let's first begin with what SoundCloud sent me after they removed my song from the platform. Now you can pause the video now to read the message that was sent, but essentially SoundCloud is implying that I was in copyright violation because I did not have permission from the owner of the original song to post the song onto SoundCloud. Now the thing I have a problem with is that SoundCloud words this as if my song and upload is in violation of copyright laws, wherein in fact it's actually just in violation of their policies, SoundCloud's own policies, and not necessarily copyright law in the country they're based in or the country that I'm based in. SoundCloud is based in Germany, so let's just start there. Germany actually has something in its constitution that states, you know, every citizen should have freedom of expression through art and other forms of expressing themselves. Now, when creating parody or satire content, they are excluded from copyright laws due to that constitutional right, essentially. Australia has a similar law where their copyright law actually states that things that are made for parody or satire are not under violation of copyright law. Now, of course, I sent all of this back to SoundCloud. I contacted them back. I sent them a long ass message quoting these legislations in Australia and in Germany. And after, I don't know, about a week or so of waiting, I got a computer written message back. And that was that. My parody remix of Beyonce's song was removed even though it was actually not in violation of any Australian law or German law and I'm not even sure that any human read what I had to say. However, this didn't keep me discouraged for long. It actually lit a fire under my ass to try figure out a way that I could dodge SoundCloud's compliance drones. This time what I did is I remixed the start of the song, completely changed the mix, intro was different, outro was different, shortened the song, different title, different artwork, uploaded it to a burner account, everything was fine. Wait about a week and upload it to my regular account because I'm like, you know, it didn't get deleted on the burner SoundCloud. I didn't want to risk another copyright violation. But after that one week of staying up there, I uploaded it to my regular SoundCloud. And thankfully, after about a week of being on there, still no violation. I thought, great, fantastic. I figured out a way to dodge SoundCloud's bullshit ass bots. So I thought, as soon as I change the SEO on this song, even just a little bit, to actually include Beyonce in the original song's title, Boom, within 24 hours, that song was also removed for SoundCloud copyright violation. And I received another infringement, even though, again, as we established, there was no legislation or law broken. Just a policy that SoundCloud has, and they present as if they are acting in the interest of the law, when they are acting in the interest of their policies and their shareholders. So, just like me, you're probably thinking to yourself, what the fuck happened? SoundCloud used to be the land of remixes. Is SoundCloud no longer the land of remixes? SoundCloud used to be a safe haven for indie artists, but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Well, basically what happened is that SoundCloud was basically getting threatened to get sued by all the big record labels that were saying, hey, we're gonna sue you and not put our artist music on your platform because your platform doesn't do enough to stop copywritten music from being uploaded to it. So SoundCloud not really having much choice had to bend to their will. And 
considering that SoundCloud is only as of recent started to become profitable, they weren't really in a position to be able to hire a massive team to sift through every single song that's uploaded. I mean, there's so, so much content that gets uploaded to SoundCloud all the time. So it would be unreasonable to have a human to check all of these violations. However, what they did instead is they integrated a algorithm to pick up any sort of copyright, anything, and again, not even copyright, anything that has any similarity with an original master. So I know producers and uh, engineers and stuff that have been caught using samples that they actually have permission to use. They've purchased the sample pack and the algorithm is still giving them a copyright strike because something in that song matches something else in an original master. And I feel like SoundCloud could do so much more in figuring out a better way to go about this. So the songs that are illegally copywritten, they do get removed. And the songs that are created just for artistic expression, for parody, for satire, for no profitable gain, they should be allowed on the platform. You know, a good example of this is YouTube. YouTube scans your songs and whatever content you upload. If it's copywritten, you cannot run ads on it. You can't make money on it. Maybe it's banned in a few select countries, but your content is still able to live there. And I think that's the fair way to do it. YouTube honestly stays the goat at doing stuff for indie artists. I think it is the most... It's definitely not perfect, but I think as far as freedom on platforms go for independent artists with no record label, YouTube is the go. So what now? I personally will be pulling the majority of my music from SoundCloud. I'm done paying 160 to 180 bucks a year or whatever it was for a service where I don't even get to communicate with a real person when there's something wrong. There is no customer service at SoundCloud. You know, you put that into contrast with DistroKid. I pay DistroKid maybe like a hundred bucks a year, right? I pay less for DistroKid who distributes my music to all of these platforms than I do for just SoundCloud alone. And what's more is that DistroKid replies to me within 24 hours. I speak to real people when I contact them. Sp same with Spotify. When I contact Spotify, within 24 hours, they're usually able to help me out. So why are these companies able to provide such a more superior customer service compared to SoundCloud? It's something that could be due to money, short staff, or just straight up negligence. And I think, unfortunately, that's what it's come down to. I know this wasn't a very fun video to watch, but I really appreciate your time. If you like this video, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing, and maybe watching one of the other videos that are on the screen right now. That's all for this time. Peace out.